Uh, Acucella is a clinical stage uh, ophthalmology company, and our lead program is called visual psychomodulation. Today, I like to talk about uh, preclinical scientific proof of concept of this visual psychomodulation and the uh, early uh, kind of data from the uh, phase 2A clinical trials that we completed uh, in uh, our recent uh, findings. So we're a publicly traded company in Japan, so uh, we have uh, this forward-looking statement. What, we, uh, what I tell you today may, not, may be significantly different in the future. So uh, we have our lead uh, molecule is called imikisad hydrochloride. This is a once-a-day orally administered molecule that is intended to slow the process called uh, visual cycle in the eye. And we think that by reducing this visual cycle, we have a multiple benefit that I'll talk about in, in a moment. So in the retina, there are two types of photoreceptors, cone photoreceptors and rod photoreceptors. 10% of photoreceptors are cone photoreceptors, which is responsible for daytime vision, which we utilize uh, for the most of the visual information. And 90% of cells are called rod photoreceptors that works under very dim light condition, which uh, utilizes a lot of energy and a lot of uh, vitamin and metabolism in the eye, although they're not really uh, sending useful information to the brain under light illuminated condition. In past 50 years, uh, in, uh, we have been receiving 10 times more artificial light to retina uh, compared to old days. So we have uh, such a uh, kind of ex excess exposure of light that can lead to a lot of uh, negative impact to, to the back of the eye. So we are, our target protein is called RP65. RP65 is the uh, key enzyme in the isomerization complex in the RP cell layer, which is specifically expressed uh, only in the retina. This allows us to develop this molecule orally without causing systemic side effects, leading to better safety profile. And we also have the uh, methodology called uh, electroretinogram that can measure the pharmacological activity of our molecule preclinically and clinically. That allowed us to translate preclinical data smoothly into clinical data. So what is visual cycle? Uh, visual cycle is a process in the eye for us to continuously see and receive light. We have a molecule called 11 cis retinal bound to rhodopsin in the retina that received light and changes the conformation from 11 cis to all trans. And that morphological change is, uh, it will trigger the, the biochemical ac uh, reaction in the retina and eventually propagates to the brain as visual information. For us to continuously see, we have to recycle that all trans retinal back into 11 cis uh, in the process called visual cycle, utilizing RP65 as a key component. But with prolonged light exposure and with the decrease in the ability to clear the uh, toxic byproduct, in, over, a long, over a long period of time, we do see accumulation of vitamin-related toxin in the retina, called, mainly called A2E and other related products. So our hope is to, by reducing visual cycle, we, we're hoping to reduce this accumulation of toxic byproduct. This is the uh, magnified version of uh, rod photoreceptor and uh, RPE. As you can see, uh, the, with the light exposure, with 11 cis converted to all trans right now, by spinning this visual cycle for a prolonged period of time, you start to see accumulation of vitamin-related toxins. Our hope is to reduce this RP65 activity and reduce the further accumulation of toxic byproduct in the retina. This is the uh, one proof of concept data we got from ABCR knockout mice. ABCR knockout mice is the model of juvenile form of macular degeneration or Stargardt disease, which you see massive accumulation of toxic vitamin and related toxic byproduct in the retina. And we were able to demonstrate dose dependent reduction in the accumulation of uh, toxic byproduct in three months. Uh, this is another interesting result that we got from uh, retinopathy or prematurity model, which involves uh, neovascularization in the retina, uh, which can be a uh, representative model for uh, 
like uh, central retinal vein occlusion or diabetic retinopathy. And in, in this model, we were able to demonstrate the dose-dependent reduction uh, in the form formation of nervous vascularization. We believe that uh, the reason why we see this phenomenon is by reducing the uh, metabolic demand in the retina by having less illuminescence available to photoreceptors. Photoreceptors utilize less energy at night with reduced dark current, and therefore this uh, translates into la uh, less neovascularization with uh, less oxygen demand in the retina. Uh, this is another uh, proof of concept model that we tested, the acute light damage model. Uh, when you shine very bright light to animals, you see the photoreceptor degeneration in acute uh, phase. And we were able to demonstrate those dependent decrease in the protection or, or the uh, death of outer nuclear layer or photoreceptors. Uh, on the left panel, you see this, uh, this is the ERG data from preclinical data suggesting that uh, you can actually inhibit the rod-specific visual cycle uh, in a very uh, potent way at certain dose. And this is the first uh, clinical data that we have from phase 2A data. And as you can see, we tested a 2 milligram, starting from 2 milligram up to 10 milligrams, and we were able to demonstrate 10 milligram almost complete inhibition rod visual cycle meaning that uh, we're reducing uh, this uh, formation of 11 cysts in, in the rod, rod photoreceptors. And uh, this is uh, one of the most uh, important data that I'd like to share today is the, like uh, we had learned from uh, uh, early presenters that uh, mm -hmm. clinical trials for dry form macular degeneration, we utilize the growth rate of geographic atrophy measured by fundus autofluorescence. And in this uh, pooled analysis of treated versus placebo, although it was only 90 days trial, we were able to see the trend in the, in the uh, decrease in the progression rate of almost 20 percent. Uh, so th this data tells us that although it was only 90 days trial with only uh, 58 patients total, we, we were able to see early hint of efficacy at this early stage and also uh, this is a pool data from 2.5 and 5 and 10 milligram telling us that even at lower doses, our molecule may have uh, potential efficacy. With that data, we're currently in a phase 2B slash trial uh, in the United States, 50 sites in the United States and 10 sites in Europe running 508 patients, two-year study, and uh, our data is expected to come out uh, mid-next year. And our primary endpoint is the rate of progression of geographic atrophy. And the secondary endpoint we use is the uh, development of wet AMD as well. So uh, we're very excited to uh, see this result next year. We have a very strong management team with a lot of experience in ophthalmology drug development. Some of you may know these people. So in summary, we have a very exciting orally available molecule for a uh, huge unmet medical needs that is fast tracked and we're in the late stage of development. So please stay tuned for the data that we send out uh, mid next year. Thank you very much.